who comes in my sleeper berth. I got him recorded on live too. This is disgusting. This is the mechanic. This is the so-called mechanic. But he's disgusting. He touches me inappropriately when I finally sleep about it. He gets mad and snatches the keys out the truck. And let me burn the hot ass sun. Because he's disgusting. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. It's just disgusting. This is the mechanic. This is the so-called mechanic. But he's disgusting. Sexual harassment in the trucking workspace. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. This clip, this is when a mechanic actually comes in my truck making sexual advances towards me. He didn't know I was on live, so he didn't even know that this was all being caught on tape. working for it's not morning um for since november november last year so november it'll be last year so november it'll be one year and zero accident accident so from november till now zero accident why wouldn't he believe in you i don't know why he wouldn't may a team run over there huh one may a team run over there if the team run with me, we go have sex. What the heck? That's crazy. Oh. Oh no, I don't need any, I don't need any team runners. <laughs> you know what? Mm -hmm. If you team with me, we go have sex. No, I'm good. We go have sex. The sexual predator who comes in my sleeper berth, I got him recorded on live too. It's just disgusting. This is the mechanic. This is the so-called mechanic. But he's disgusting. He touches me inappropriately when I finally sleep about it. He gets mad and snatches the keys out the truck and let me burn the hot ass sun because he's disgusting. Cars. I Everything was going good until I told him that I was being sexually harassed by the other employees that worked for the company. I spoke to my boss and his wife about the sexual harassment and disrespect I was going through in the workplace. And I spoke to him about me being underpaid and I also wasn't getting the proper rest because the manager Sheldon would call me during the time I would be sleeping. I also told them I wasn't being treated fairly. I also informed them the manager Sheldon gets upset when I don't want to work illegally past my driving hours. Sheldon also discussed my work performances with other drivers. He would say things like, she is a female, we should fire her because she is a woman working a men's job and she's not strong enough to do the work. However, I always prove Sheldon wrong. Tierra, the sassy trucker back in the building. <laughs> What's up? Ah, ah, man, like you never left. man, <laughs> like you never left. <laughs> well, you did. Yeah. Well, well, actually, you did leave. You did leave. I never and, really truly left. Well, no, you, you, you left the states. Let's let's talk about that. How, how was it driving over in Dubai? Like, I mean, that had to be a different. That had to be a different type of a uh, vibe over there. So. I am here in Dubai about to test drive this truck. It's a Mercedes truck. And it's cute. It's my first time driving one. I was also told I might be the first female truck driver to ever drive a truck in Dubai. experience it was amazing the trucks drive smooth and all the trucks are exotic trucks so that's the good thing that i liked about it and it was pretty different because those trucks actually fit higher than the average truck in america all right so i gotta ask 
how did you get how how did you manage to be picked as a first female driver to to drive trucks in Dubai? I just kind of made it happen. I always wanted to see what it was like driving overseas. So when I got the opportunity to do it, I went for it, and I liked it. And I got a feel for what it would be like if I actually wanted to start working over there, things like that, and starting my own trucking company. Now, being the first female, uh, I mean, how I mean, how was it like over there? Like they, you know, the guys, like wow, we we got an American female over here. How how was the reception over there? They were actually very shocked at first because they didn't believe that I can actually drive a truck. Because women over there, they don't actually drive semi trucks. But I heard they drive like a regular tow truck, but those are just the regular trucks. So when they saw me walk in the office, they didn't believe it. So they're like, oh, okay, I can see you guys some videos of me driving. And they're like, okay, cool. That's all I really needed. Didn't ask for a license or anything. I just hopped in the truck. But it was a little bit different. It was a little bit different. So did you, so of course, did did you have to go, well, of course you went out with with one of their representatives. I mean, did they did they let you drive the truck by your by yourself at one point? Yes, they let me drive the truck by myself at one point. But towards the end, the guy wanted to actually get inside the truck and take some videos of me, so he can show like his other colleagues and stuff. All right. So, what was this for, Sassy? Was this for like a promotion? Was this for like a a trucking company that that wanted to show? Uh, show what they can do here in the states. Was this like a cross promotion? What, what was it? Well, pretty much, it was a trucking company that was hiring in Dubai, and I pretty much thought I was going to end up staying over there and start driving. So, with that being said, <clears throat> they were hiring for drivers, and they said I would have been like the first female driver if I would have stuck it out and stuff. So it was just pretty much on a walk-in biases. And so the only reason why I didn't go ahead and stay in Dubai because I had to get some stuff handled here in the USA. I didn't have all the documents that I needed to actually drive me to Dubai. What, now, what, now, everything will, pro, well, everything will have to change. It's no probably about it. Um, you'll have to get a Dubai license. You'll have to... I mean, what 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 was the license like? I mean, did they uh, what what would, what would be the criteria to get a Dubai license? And would, would it be would your... it be would it be the same? Would it be the same as it is over here as well? Yeah, it's pretty much the same step. Pretty much the same step. It's, but I think it's a lot easier if you're in the USA. That's what I was heard. That's what I was told. Now. Of course, you would have went over there on what would, what would have been called a a work visa, right? Eventually, if right. you would have eventually if you would have stayed, what would how would it be the the you know to transfer your license over? Would it be an easy, you know, smooth and easy, or would it be kind of difficult? I mean, you already said you had to come back to the to the states to take care of some stuff before that happened. So what 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 what's the difficulties of transferring your commercial license from U.S. to a Dubai license? It's actually just very easy. I think they said all you pretty much need was just to take the road test, and then it's just that simple. You don't really have to do all these extra tests. It's just simple as one, two, three, and a vision test, and that's pretty much it. Do they have it's this? It's really quick and smooth. Do they st- do they have the 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 same uh, endorsements as we do? Do they have like hazmats, doubles, triples, uh, tankers? No, I'm not sure about that. I'm, I don't really know how that works, but I'm sure that they do because I did see people with hazmats and tankers and things like that. But I don't know how that works, actually. So road driving in Dubai. What was the experience? Uh, was you on the left side? Was you speeding? Was, what, what was the experience like driving into the Dubai streets versus 
driving over here in the States? A crazier driver, um, road conditions sometimes in certain areas where it's not fully developed. Um, a lot of stairs, I would say, because they're not used to being a woman in a truck. And pretty much, I would say, the road, well, it was kind of smooth when I first got into the truck, driving on the road conditions. Then after some while, it takes some time to getting used to. Because that's a whole different ball game over there. It's not like the USA. The streets are just easy and simple to follow. All right, all right. Now you you're a world traveler. I, I'm I'm just gonna put that out there. You you love traveling the world. You you been you been to exotic you been to exotic places. I mean you 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 work hard and you play harder. I I got to give you that. Uh, what? When you was over in Dubai, uh, how long we, how long you was over there for? I was over there since September twenty seventh to December seventh of twenty twenty two. All right. So how how was the uh, how how was the life over there in Dubai outside of the truck? Very expensive. Very, very expensive. Like every time you walk into the store, you're probably going to spend more than $200 on a meal or things like that. It's a very expensive place. Jeez. Please. All right. So, of course, you know, I, I watch a lot of TV. I haven't came over, I haven't went over to Dubai, but the is, is it true what they say about Dubai men over there? Are they like, are they like mandingos and and like to treat their women well? Or I also heard some bad stuff over there as well. Like you know they 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 have their women walk behind them and stuff like that. Have have you ever seen anything like that or any? I want to say any disrespect or anything like that. They actually respect women over there in Dubai when it comes to voicing your opinion and standing up for yourself. So you probably hear like a lot of people that go to Dubai or women that go there, they call them the porta parties, the human porta parties. That's not true. I didn't experience that one over there. It probably happened to those people, but it didn't happen to me. And that's something that they probably signed up for. But other than that, the men do treat you very good. They cater to you in Dubai. They're very sweet people. And they believe in actually taking women out on dates and not just texting them WID all day. <laughs> so that's a big difference from the men in Dubai and the men in America. They know how to really court women really good. So I'm gonna. So should I put you in the category of the passport women now? Like, you know, we got the passport bros, but should I should I should I put you in the category of uh, of, of the passport women? I mean, like y'all or passport sisters. I mean, like y'all. I mean, the guys um, over here. The guys going over there abroad. The passport bros are are um crazy people. Those people are like they're. I don't know. They're who the people who we gotta stay away from when it comes to the dating scene. Okay. So I wouldn't say passport bros or uh, women. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So you're back yeah. in the. You're 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 back in the states. You're uh, you 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 back in the truck, but unfortunately, you made a uh, I don't know. You you made a a a, a kind of scary video yesterday of you being sexually harassed. Of course, I of course I watched it, and um, and I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, sassy. Uh, you know, you 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 went you you was a little bit all over the place in the video. So, what I'm going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to take it one step at a time. So, you took the truck to get repaired, and one of the mechanics came at you sideways. What happened with that? Well, that guy who you saw in the beginning of the video where I was yelling at. He's the mechanic, right? So my company, he also works for the company as well, as well as work on the truck. So 
he's a driver as well for my company. He actually drives my truck when I'm out on vacation. So the mechanic and me, um, I was on live, and he didn't even know I was live recording. I always go live and stuff for social media. And he starts saying things like, um, things like, oh, um, I would be your team driver. And basically, assaulting me. he even touched me inappropriately, and I told him not to do that, but I didn't just up her on live. That was kind of like afterwards. So that's how that happened. And so I actually was being harassed multiple times by different employees, mechanics that work there. So I will let the boss know that this is happening. And he goes, oh, I'll talk to them. Sometimes they'll say things like, oh, they're probably just playing. Don't take it serious. I'm like, what? So my boss actually never seen that live video. So he probably didn't know how bad this really was. It just got so bad to the point where I didn't want to be nowhere near the mechanic shop or be nowhere near any of the guys at that trucking company. And I'm the only female there, so I wasn't treated fairly at all. Okay, okay. So the guy so the guy that was that was the mechanic guy, the one that you pointed the camera at, he was the one that was yeah. actually On inside. The left. He was the one that was actually inside the truck with you when he was talking to you inappropriately and stuff like that yeah he walked up to me while he was fixing the truck and i was on live and he started talking to me inappropriately so as if it was normal so i mean i know you was on live and we did hear him you know say a few things uh why you didn't wh number one why you didn't face the camera i mean you know turn the camera facing him so you could get him like right in the like right in the act because it kind of made it it kind of made it like he was like kind of made it like he he was playing like not being serious or something like that but if you would have you know you would have had the camera facing him he would have you know people's actions would be a hell of a lot different you know why they was why they in the act of doing something but then afterwards, of course, you, you know, you, you kind of got on him and went in on him, you know, while he was outside and he kind of like walked away. Why, why not get at him or did you? Because like I said, we only, we only caught part of, of the video that's, that you, that you put out there. Like I said, I only caught what I could catch, and he actually caught me off guard and caught me by surprise when he even said it. Gotcha. And not only that, he touched me inappropriately. So he wasn't playing. If you're playing with somebody, you don't... First of all, you can't play like that, and you don't do that to a woman. After they told you multiple times to stop it, no, you don't want to drive teams with them. After me saying no that first, that first time, he should have stopped. He kept going. You could see how the look on my face, how I'm like, yeah, you're uncomfortable. annoyed, uncomfortable and annoyed. And if he was just playing, he wouldn't have touched me inappropriately. You see, so that's not just playing. Like, what gives him the authority to do that in my truck? And I'm mind you, I'm sitting in my truck, minding my business. I'm not outside bothering him. He comes in my truck and starts bothering me, messing with me invading my personal space yeah and putting your hand and putting his hands on you too that's it's not that's cool. wrong that's not playing that that is disrespect all right if so that's the case any man can walk up to any woman at the truck stop and hit on them and touch them inappropriately that's not playing no nah, that's that's not cool either um all right so before we get to you telling the you know the boss and everything you said this is this has happened to you multiple times like he wasn't he wasn't the first one that that accosted you and before you before you answer that why you didn't why you didn't leave the company i didn't leave the company at the time because the boss he uh, was saying how he would talk to them and stuff right when the first incident happened and the first incident that happened was actually with a different mechanic. Um, I would call him and tell him that the truck broke down. Because that's who I would always call when the truck breaks down. My boss would actually make me call the mechanics 
want to know what's happening with the truck directly. So when I told him about the first incident with him, the mechanic actually called me out of my name. Um, I told him about that. So at that point, he actually got rid of that mechanic, right? And I didn't see him or hear from him for a very, very long time. I've never seen that mechanic since I've been working there. So at that point, things started going okay. And with that being said, next thing you know, here's this other mechanic or whatever that comes out of nowhere who's the new mechanic that works in the truck. Now me and him have problems. And he's being disrespectful as well mm. and sexually harassing me. So it was, that's how it went. All the right. first mechanic, he um, got rid of him or something. But when he got rid of him, it was more or less, say, like, for a few months. It's like he disappeared and worked in the other truck. He made it look like he actually got rid of him. Because I started seeing that mechanic more towards, like, the end of me, like, working at that company. All right. So at least the boss at that time took that serious and got rid of and and got rid of the guy. That's that that's a good one. I, I my my hats off to him for doing that because you definitely don't want a sexual but harassment case. He was still case. around. Oh, he was, he was oh. still around. He just didn't have him work on my truck. He would work on other trucks, but I didn't see him for a long time. All right, but it, so in other words, he kept him away from from you. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I that's what I was trying. Oh, okay, to say. okay. So with that. that so with that yeah. said, so so with that said, he kept him away from you, so you, so that he won't take the heat of a of a sexual harassment case. You agree? Right. Okay. 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 All right. So the new guy coming in started doing inappropriate stuff. You went back to the boss, and now the boss is 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 not believing you now or what's what's the deal it's like he was taking their side over mine and i also spoke with the boss's wife as well and she said i didn't know this was happening i said i spoke to your husband multiple times about this and she was like i didn't know all this was happening like she started pretending like she didn't know and it just seemed like they were taking me for a joke is this the same company that 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 you drive uh that you haul uh the car haul yes. for? Yes, I was car hauling for some Jamaicans out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay, 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 okay. So now you so now you 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 told the 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 boss lady or the boss's wife you know to get her up to speed. So now they're—I mean, would uh, they're not taking you serious? They, what, what are, what, what are, what are they doing that that you feel that they not, uh, that they not doing as much? They doing too little. Um, I felt that they weren't listening to me and not taking me serious and just basically running me to death. Like they would just make me work then listen to what I have to say. Like, they were all about making their money. They didn't really care too much for... They don't care much for their employees. They don't care about how we feel. Yeah, but there was also other employees there um, that didn't like how they handled things. And they're bad communicators. Yeah, that seems like a a growing trend in, in trucking right now. A lot of companies, you know, a lot of a lot of companies, a lot of owner operators, they just not caring right. about their employees or their drivers and all they just care is about the bottom line. It's messed up. <laughs> messed up indeed. Um all right, so we're gonna unpack the situation with you and the and the fleet manager. Now you and the fleet manager is not seeing eye to eye. They they kind of like want you to run illegally. Uh, did you express that to the uh, to the boss man as well, or was what's the situation with that? Yeah, he was. I did tell him about it. He was in on it too. Basically, the boss man lets the manager do all do all his dirty work. So basically, the boss man he's aware of this. He's okay with it. 
So he lets the manager do all his dirty work. So, for example, if I have to pick up a load in Baltimore, Maryland, by tomorrow, basically the manager is the one to say, hey, you need to get there by tomorrow because you got to get there before 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, that's impossible. I have to get my rep. And so when I notify the boss about this, he just goes, yeah, you can't do that. You got to get your rest. He basically makes it seem like he knows that it's wrong and he doesn't handle it. And I tell him multiple times that this is wrong. Like, you guys are, you guys can't do this. This is illegal because I'll get in trouble, not you guys. I'll get the ticket. Sassy, do you feel that you getting all this heat from from this company or from from the owner operators because uh be, be because of you complaining too much yeah yes i feel like that's part of the reason it's definitely part of the reason because every time i can complain about something even even if i'm just complaining about the truck not being fixed they will literally have me sit and wait a week without pay so it's kind of like they was trying to make me quit in a way so that they can make it look like I quit, if that makes any sense. Mm. When they're the ones who got rid of me for filing complaints and telling them about themselves, about the sexual harassment, how they were treating me, the abuse, everything. Well, I, I'm definitely sorry to hear that you're going through all of this, man. What, what are you, Sassy, you've been in the game for, for a good minute. I mean, I'm assuming your license is clean. I'm assuming you don't have no, you know, you're not in an FMCSA or anything like that. I, the only, the only thing, that, the only issue that I see is that you're, you're out of Florida. You know, trucking companies is kind of, it's kind of sparse down there. But you could still get into a, into another company. What what are you doing right now? Yeah. To what what are you doing right now? I'm 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 kind of hoping that you're not working for that you're not driving for them because of the because of how they treating you. No. But what what are you no. doing? What what are you doing right now? What what's what are you doing right now as far as you know uh, trying to get back at them and you're trying to get back you know trying to get back into a into with a different company? Well, I took a break from trucking to clear my mind from all this nonsense, but I'm very relieved that I don't have to work for them anymore. And then I just got my gallbladder removed. So I had got gallbladder surgery, so I've been taking like a break and a rest before I hop back in the truck. Any uh, in, any idea, any any idea which way you want to go? I mean, because you, you pretty much... You pretty much did it all. You you was a flatbedder, car hauler, drive in, reefer. Any 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 idea which way you uh which way you want to go when you get back I, in? Yeah, I think I want to haul tankers or haul um cows. I think. Okay, so you want to get into cow? You want to get into cattle hauling? Okay, is that yeah. is that feasible? That well, you know what. I, I mean, Florida is one of my is one of my regular routes now. So I I do see, you know, livestock down there uh, a little bit. So yeah, okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So that will uh, so that will be the when when do you think you will probably go and and test your hand at that? I'm thinking about in one more month. One month or so. That's when I should be ready mentally. All right, all right. Sassy trucker, everybody. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Want you to love me all night? Yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet? Yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G? Yeah, I'm